Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome back to my hunting cabin and another deer skin review. Uh, today we are going to be reviewing and test firing the Heritage Arms Rough Rider 22 long rifle 6 shot revolver pistol. So stay tuned, let's talk about this neat little handgun. Welcome back. So you'll remember on my previous video, I did a Black Aces 12 gauge uh, R series tactical shotgun. I bought this pistol, the Heritage Arms uh, Rough Rider, on the same order. They were both on sale. They both had free shipping involved. So I purchased them both at the same time and they both came together. Uh, this gun also, like the Black Aces uh, tactical shotgun, was on sale. It was $129.99. Shipping was free, and I've always wanted one of these. Ever since I first saw them, I've always wanted them. And uh, so let's go ahead and relocate the camera down here to the deer skin. Let's talk about this cool little pistol, and I'll let you know what I think of it. All right, so here we are. The Heritage Arms Rough Rider 22-shot revolver. You know me. I don't do unboxings, so there goes the box. Let's, let's talk about the boring stuff right away. First off, let's talk about the owner's manual. You know me and how I am with owner's manual. This owner's manual is actually not too bad. It's full color. It gives you pretty much all the information you need, how to remove the cylinder, how to properly fire it, how everything works. Not a bad owner's manual, and I'm not, I'm don't, I can't at all find any real fault with this. Fit and finish of the gun. We have to take into account that this is a $130 pistol. And I paid $129.99 for it uh, with free shipping. So taking all that into account, I pretty much got exactly what I expected out of this as far as fit and finish is concerned. First thing I noticed right away is that the frame itself is not of your highly polished variety. You can, it kind of almost looks like they cast this thing and then machined it later. Maybe it's the finish that they put on it, but I'm here to tell you that the finish is not real highly refined. If this was a Smith or a Ruger Vaquero or something like that, I'd be pretty disappointed with the finish on it because it's just not that great. But for what it is, $130 pistol, I really have no room to complain about it. Now, the cylinder and the barrel uh, are actually machined pretty nice. Uh, the barrel's got nice machining. There's not any machining marks in it. The cylinder looks like it was very well made, and I really have no complaints about that as in and of itself. Uh, there's some scratches in it. When I got the gun, like uh, on the back strap here, you can see that there's some scratches. Those scratches were in there when I got it. On the bottom of the trigger guard here, you can see that there's some scratches. Those scratches were not caused by me. Those were there the day I got it out of the box. Uh, the bottom of the, the pistol, uh, the strap of the pistol has got some scratches and nicks on it. So, I mean, the, the fit and finish is, is not pristine by any means of the word. Uh, the wood grips. Again, the wood grips are very functional and they're pretty rough. They don't fit up in the cracks, uh, the, the seams where they meet up to the metal. Are, they're not real closely fit. Uh, you can see where the couple of times they might have got a little too overzealous with the grinder and they didn't quite get everything to fit up. There's gaps and spaces in here. Like right here, there's a, there's a pretty good space in between the frame and the wood. There's a pretty good space in between the frame and the wood there. You can look here on the, on the top of the strap. Uh, the fit up isn't real great around the the front and the back uh, you can feel that sometimes the strap is a little higher than the wood the fit up on the wood is just not really what i would call good by any stretch of the means but it's functional and honestly when i'm holding it in my hand i can't feel it it's purely aesthetic it's purely visual and f like i said for a 130 thirty dollar pistol it's exactly what I expected to get when I opened up the box. 
sights. Uh, sights are your very basic sights. You've got a fixed blade sight up front. You've got a notch and groove sight in the back. They are completely non-adjustable. If this gun is shooting off, you totally have to Kentucky windage this thing. Uh, I did notice this, that this gun has a tendency to shoot a bit to the left. So you got to hold left edge on it. But for what, I, for what I intended to use this for, which is a plinker, you know, a pop can gun, it does just fine. Uh, I don't plan on using this as a trapping gun. I'm not going to certainly have my life depend on this firearm. But it is a totally fun gun to use for a plinker, which is exactly what I wanted it for. Uh, so the accuracy is actually not bad once you figure out where the gun shoots. And my gun shoot does shoot just a little bit left. Uh, as far as function of the gun goes, it's, it's your basic single action. You have to cock it to fire each round. Uh, I probably fired 150 rounds out of it today. I had no issues with it. Uh, the cylinder indexed perfectly every time. It fired every round I shot. I didn't have any misfires or anything of that effect. And it functions just exactly like a single action should. As far as loading is concerned, you have to half cock it, just like you would any other single action. Open up the loading gate, and you have to turn and index each, uh, each chamber for the rounds by rotating the cylinder and that works just fine. If I do have a gripe about this, it's the loading gate itself. I did notice that I had a tendency to inadvertently close the loading gate uh, and that's because there's no positive detent holding it open. Uh, in turn, there's also no positive detent holding it shut. It's purely spring pressure which is holding it closed. So it doesn't snap shut and have any kind of a detent in the open or closed position and I did notice that as I was loading it, if I wasn't careful, I had a tendency to inadvertently bump it and close it. It was just more of an annoyance. It still functioned as it should. The big difference with this single action revolver that you're going to find with it, that you're not going to find with any other single action revolver is the fact that it does have a safety on it. it. This seems a little extra to me. It is a single action. You do have to physically cock the hammer to shoot it. I understand why they put it on there because if you have a full cylinder there's no way that you can accidentally bump the hammer and have the gun go off which is why you, you ever heard the term of a cowboy load where you had a six gun but they only loaded five and that was because the hammer was always sitting on an empty chamber or an empty an empty hole that was so you didn't accidentally bump the hammer falling off your horse or whatever and have the gun go off because it slammed into the primer so the safety does deter that and and it does do that because if you see if i if i put the safety into the fire position watch the hammer the hammer drops and if i put the safety back into the safe position you can see the hammer lift away and that's because there's a physical block that the safety provides which will not let the hammer come in contact with the firing pin it just will not happen so that safety will completely deter that from happening. I just think it's a little bit extra. Uh, I'm not going to walk around with this thing loaded on my hip or anything like that. This is, like I said, for me, this is going to be a pop can plinker. But if you plan to use this as a holster gun, that might be an okay thing for you. I, I didn't find it to be a problem. It didn't get in the way. I didn't notice it when I was cocking the gun or shooting the gun or loading the gun. Uh, one time I forgot to disengage the safety and put it to the fire position and clicked off a couple of shots and it didn't go bang well it's because i had the safety on so the safety does actually work uh, as far as the cylinder removal is it's just like any other side loading gate cylinder to remove it's very very simple you push that button remove the cylinder pin open the loading gate and the cylinder falls right out to put it back in you just go in reverse order put the cylinder back in Push the, put the cylinder pin back into place, push the button, slide everything back home. Do a function check on it, everything works like it should. So that's the gun itself. Is, is it a fine heirloom piece? Not by any means of the word. Is it a fun gun to shoot? This thing is damn fun to shoot. I had an absolute blast shooting it today, if I may be allowed that pun. This, this was just an absolute hoot to shoot. It fired every round I ever put in it. Never had any misfires. Uh, it loaded and unloaded quite easy. 
I did uh, I did do some fanning with it just for the sake of fun. I don't recommend you do that, but the gun will fan. You can also thumb it if you want to, and it will thumb. I didn't do any thumbing with it today, uh, but it will do it, and it'll shoot just like any other any other single action six gun. It's an absolute riot to shoot this thing. I had so much fun shooting this today. It was just an absolute blast. There's something about a single action revolver to shoot. It just kind of brings you back to the days of Billy the Kid and Wyatt Earp and, and the days of the Cowboys. And it's just a whole lot of fun to shoot. And it kind of lets, lets the kid come out of you for just a little bit. And I am just I'm excited for summer to come around and weather when the weather is nicer and get my kids out here to see and we can have a little pop can competition to see who can blow up the pop cans and just have a lot of fun with this because it's going to be a lot of fun to shoot. So that's that's the basic deer skin review of the gun. Uh, let's let's take it to the range and do a little more shooting with it. You saw some shooting here throughout this video, but let's do a little more with it and uh, let's wrap this video up. So there it is, the Heritage Rough Rider 22 single action revolver. It's rough, it's functional, and it's a whole lot of fun to shoot. And if you can pick these things up for like that $130 to $140 range, I would say jump on it and go for it. I had no issues with this one in the first 150 rounds, and I'm going to keep shooting it. If I start having problems, I will obviously post more videos to that effect. But this gun was a whole lot of fun to shoot today, and I can't wait to get my kids out here so we can have a little pop can competition with it. Uh, at the end of the day, would I recommend it? Absolutely. If you're just looking for a fun little inexpensive plinker and you want to get into the single action revolver game, this is a very economical way to do it. Palmetto has got these things on sale quite regularly. They've got many varieties. They've got 4 inch, 6 inch. They, I think they've even got a big long 15, 16 inch version. If you're into that, you can get them with the WMR cylinder already included. There's just a whole myriad of options that you can get. And I would say if they go on sale and you have the means to do it, go ahead and pick one of these up. You, I don't think you'll be disappointed because they are just a whole lot of fun to shoot. That all being said, uh, let's wrap this video up. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was at least semi-entertaining. If you are liking this content and you do like this channel and anything that I'm doing on this channel, please, you'd be doing me a huge favor by hitting that like and subscribe button down below, dinging that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos, and hit me with some comments. Uh, if you've got any questions about anything I cover in any of my videos, hit me in the comments. I make a real valid effort to try and answer all of those comments and as many comments as I possibly can. If there's something else you would like to see, if you want to see a specific gun video, or if you want to see some kind of equipment video, or do-it-yourself repair video, if it's within my means and capabilities, I will certainly try to get that into the schedule and do that. Uh, just hit me in the comments, and I'll, I'll see what I can do about getting that in there.
This is Ed with Jack of All Trades. Thank you for riding along, and we will see you on the next video.